You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife cooking up a new victim narrative. You know from my work that all narcissists see themselves as victims to a greater or lesser extent. Lesser and especially mid-range narcissists have very strong victim mentalities. Harry's wife does. Her narcissism causes her to believe that it's never her fault and people have got it in for her, that people are racist towards her, hate her unnecessarily, don't do what she wants because they're downright awkward, won't cooperate with her because they're thoroughly unpleasant to her when there's no need to be. This victim mentality permeates everything that she does when it comes to involving herself with another human being and it governs so much of her actions, so that she trades on this for the pursuit of the prime aims. The royal family had it in for me. The royal family were racist to me. The royal family were racist about my son. The British press were racist. They used the N-word about my children. Blatant lie. The British public are racist. This person is a hater. That person is a hater. I tried my best to make it work, but they just wouldn't play ball. Wah, wah, wah. Repeatedly playing the victim, appearing on Oprah with the sob story, PR puff pieces trying to make her seem like she's the one that's hard done to, accusing Catherine, Princess of Wales, of making her cry when it was the other way around. Nobody asked me if I was okay. Attempt to cry when speaking to Tom Bradby. There are repeated instances, supported by evidence, of Harry's wife's demonstrating her huge victim mentality. She's dined out on this victim narrative for years. She'll have done it in the past, although we didn't hear about it, because fortunately back then, none of us knew who she was. Unfortunately now, because she is plastered across magazines and reported on in the news, this victim narrative is thrust down our throats on a regular basis. You would think that ultimately her narcissism would start to realise people are sick of this and therefore it's not an appropriate thing to continue to wheel out. People aren't going to give you the support or the benefit of the doubt any longer. Even those that are ordinarily supportive might think, OK, enough with the self-pity, it's getting boring now. However, it would appear that her narcissism deems that it's appropriate to try and squeeze some more victim mentality out of things, because, as the American thinker states, it's the oldest trick in the Pulp Fiction writer's playbook. Make the reader feel sorry for the poor schmuck you've cast as protagonist. Which brings us to Harry's wife and Harry, who are nothing if not practiced in the related art of public relations. Poor Harry's wife, even poorer Harry, who remains also traumatised by the death of his mother, People's Princess Diana, in a Paris tunnel after a high-speed chase, supposedly fleeing the paparazzi in 1997. In Harry's Apple TV docuseries, he said that incident led him to drink and to do drugs and go out with Harry's wife. Stand by for a relapse. There's just one problem, though, with this neat narrative of good Prince Harry and Duchess Harry's wife and bad paparazzi, constantly following them around to perdition, it's called facts. New York's cops say the Sussexes' account doesn't match with facts they knew. According to Red State, citing ABC News, police sources described to ABC News a different version of events from the one described by Harry and Harry's wife spokesperson. Two New York Police Department detectives were present at the Ziegfeld when Harry and Harry's wife emerged from the event, and drove alongside the couple's private vehicle to get them home. Along the way, police sources said photographers on bicycles are visible on security cameras, but not the kind of caravan described by sources close to Harry and Harry's wife. The police interaction with the couple lasted no more than 20 minutes, according to police sources. If the episode lasted the two hours Harry's wife and Harry say it did, it was due to their own security wanting to avoid revealing where they were staying, not because they were being chased the sources said. According to the NYPD's official statement, they assisted the private security team protecting the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. 
There were numerous photographers that made their transport challenging. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex arrived at their destination and there were no reported collisions, summonses, injuries or arrests in regard. The paparazzi apparently protested it wasn't true as well. Which pretty well puts the Sussexes in Jesse Smollett territory. As Sister Toljai observes, making themselves fake victims in an incident that never happened in order to restart their careers on a wave of public sympathy. The Daily Mail explained what Harry's wife and Harry were really up to. On the surface, Harry's wife was in town to receive a Women of Vision Award at a gala to mark the 50th anniversary of the MS Foundation for Women, the organisation set up by veteran feminist Gloria Steinem. But this was no ordinary celebrity backslapping affair. Rather, it was a waymark on what increasingly looks like an attempt to relaunch, and quite possibly save, the Sussex brand. In the US, polls and commentators have been saying for months that even Americans, with their huge appetite for soap opera and instinctive sympathy for a supposedly wrong compatriot, were tiring of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's endless bleating about so-called royal injustice and their alleged mistreatment in Britain. It is uncharted territory for a couple who were lionised by the American media as their royals in exile, celebrated for their authenticity and apparent liberation from the rigid formality of the House of Windsor. In January, a poll for Newsweek revealed that in just one month, Prince Harry's popularity had plunged 45 points in US public opinion, while Harry's wife's had tumbled 36 points. Nearly half of Americans, 44%, said the prince was wrong to include details of private family conversations in his book. Well, those are pretty high barriers for anyone ever hoping to regain respect from their now lost audience. What better than, than to make them victims? Again. They've been playing the victim card for a long time, and, well, they aren't exactly loved for it, though it seems to sell Harry's tell-all books about life in the British royal family. They even had a buddy shill for them for Newsweek, not for the first time, just in case nobody caught the narrative. Christopher Boozy, the founder of data analysis firm Bot Sentinel and social network Spoutable, came out in support of the couple's account of a near-catastrophic chase after the NYPD appeared to downplay its severity. And, of course, that clown would. He also called for reform in how the media treats public figures more widely, citing the echoes of the death of Princess Diana in a 1997 Paris crash while fleeing paparazzi. I strongly condemn the reckless behaviour of the paparazzi who chased Prince Harry and Harry's wife in New York City, Boozy told Newsweek. This dangerous incident not only put the lives of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex at risk, but also engendered, endangered countless innocent bystanders and drivers in the vicinity. The incident echoes the tragic circumstances of Princess Diana's death, where the persistent pursuit by paparazzi contributed to her fatal car accident, he said. This parallel is a poignant reminder of the potential deadly consequences of such reckless behaviour and reinforces the need for a change in the way media interacts with public figures. Of course, Boozy keen to jump on the bandwagon as he does and naturally getting it wrong. Ah, yes. Tragedy, victims, reform, a new cause. The narrative is planned out pretty well. Beyond the whole story apparently never even happening, Here's what's most disgusting about this whole claimed encounter. Harry and Harry's wife are now private citizens. They attracted paparazzi through their publicity machines, tell all books, photo spreads, Instagrams and interviews, and they cannot have it both ways. Although, of course, as a narcissist, Harry's wife believes that she can. Their hunt for fame and celebrity was a light bulb to moths, and sure enough, they drew them. What's more, they don't get to speed away from paparazzi at hellfire speeds, no matter how annoying the paparazzi are. Based on their self-chosen jobs, the paparazzi can snap away. New York streets are not their private roads, and they don't have special capacities to limit the First Amendment, which they have repeatedly expressed their problems with. They pick that job that attracts paparazzi, not the rest of us, and certainly not the people they share the road with in New York City, and got what comes of it. What the heck were they driving away from anyway that they didn't want the paparazzi to see? A trip to the Epstein mansion? The cops should have given them a speeding ticket for reckless driving. As for the parallels to Diana's death, yes, that was a sad story. But what the heck was the speeding about? Postmortem reports had it 
that the driver, Henri Paul, was drunk and shouldn't have been at the wheel at all, given his impaired driving, which combined with paparazzi chasings led to a lethal outcome. Was Harry and Harry's wife's cab, dri- cab driver drunk too? Of course not. Who was pressuring him to drive too fast? Meanwhile, Diana herself unwittingly contributed to her own death by failing to wear her seatbelt the way most of us do. Investigators into the crash reported that she would have had an 80% chance of surviving her drunk driving wreck had she just buckled up. It would appear in the photograph that Harry's wife didn't have a seatbelt fastened, again showing the arrogance of the narcissist and the lack of accountability for the behaviours. It's details like these that make the whole stunt so distasteful. Who are these clowns who, having run out of sympathy from the public, to try to exploit Harry's mother's death for their own money purposes? Of course, he does so because he has a warped perspective, generated by the death of his mother and the application of the manipulations by his wife, and she does because she simply does not care, because she has no emotional empathy. It's another bid to draw sympathy since nothing else about these grifters is sympathetic. Once again, the narcissist demonstrates her narcissism. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.